Hey, what's up guys? Yep, you're getting another video today. There's going to be a video every day this week. Because I think I'm taking next week off. This one's been rough. My uh, 85 year old great aunt, my mother's aunt, fell down the steps and split her head open. My mother's a uh, piece of work in herself and uh, it's just been rough. So, hope you enjoy this one. So the basic idea behind this is a little mini guitar amp that will fit in like an Altoids tin. And it's based on an LM386N, you know, simple amplifier. And we have our input here that first passes through a 10K pot as a volume control. And then it goes into the non-inverting input. The inverting input, as you can see, goes to ground. Then we have our output with a filter here. This is simply a DC blocking capacitor, so no DC gets to the speaker. Then we'll have a little speaker here. And then we also have this external gain circuit up here with a switch that will take us from the, what is internal, 20 to 200, gain, 200 uh, times when we put that up. So, here's our PCB, pretty simple, nothing special, just want something tiny, like I said, that'll fit in an Altoids can, guitar practice amplifier, you know, really simple. So, I'm going to order these, I'll be right back. So this video is sponsored by PCB Way, and we'll be using them, of course, to order our boards. I like to do the quick order because all you have to do is add your Gerber file. This one is called a Guitar Practice Amp, and it automatically finds the size. See, I like that. Whoops, I didn't get my my Kugelschreiber. automatically finds the size. So it fills that in. I'm going to get five of them. I'm going to get them in black. I don't care if they change the finish to gold. I mean, why would you care, right? And then you click Save to Cart. Now, everybody always complains and they say, well, that's shipping too expensive. Well, you don't have to do DHL. You can do China Post. That's not quite half, but just about. E-Packet. There you go. E-Packet is half. They also have FedEx IP and PCB Way Express. So, you know, you can pick whatever you want. And look here, if you select other chipping method, they tell you contact us for a cheaper method so you can get them as cheap as you want okay all right so we got the boards back they are sized to fit in an Altoids can I guess it's just a really simple circuit in fact you can find this exact circuit on the LM386 data sheet so, I believe I have everything that we need to assemble the circuit here. Now, this is a bigger speaker than I really want to use, but it's all I got right now. So, let's put her together. All right, let's begin with the lowest component on the board, the 10 ohm resistor I'm now <laughs> rethinking my uh, my capacitor choices look at that how the flux 
sustain that. That's pretty wild. So there's that. What else is low? Well, let's put in the socket for the amplifier. The LM386. Don't worry about that stain. We will clean all the flux off the board with alcohol when we're done here. Let me just make sure that's nice and flat. It is. Good. What a day. <laughs> that's why I'm doing this. To me, soldering is relaxing. What do you guys think? Not bad. Let's go with our 10K. This is our volume pot. You have to shape that a little bit. And to think, this day started off with me watching a James Bond movie. Who knew things would go downhill so fast from there? You know, you just can't argue with these elderly ladies in your family. Because they don't listen and they don't care. <laughs> Alright, how about our switches? This is the gain switch that will switch in this 10 microfarad capacitor which will boost from the internal gain of the LM386 to the external gain yeah you know, hopefully it might give us a little bit of dirt um, to make that variable you would need a variable capacitor and I don't want to deal with that. I don't have any. I don't want to order one. So, you know, just, uh, we'll just put in a switch. And this is, of course, the uh, power switch. So we can turn it on and turn it off. Okay, we've got our input, which is a quarter inch switchcraft jack. The red is the positive, which goes through our volume pot and then into the uh, non inverting input of the amp. Now, I twisted these wires, but that's not entirely necessary. I'm just doing it to keep things somewhat neat. You know, as neat as I can get it anyway. Man, I could barely see those little tiny holes. If they were any smaller, we'd have to get out the Optivisor. I just want to make sure. There we go. Try and get that to focus. Come on. Focus, damn it. Nip them in the bud. And we got our input. 
Now we need to do the capacitors. Okay, I'm using electrolytics here, and I'm rethinking that as I do this. But I just want to make sure I get them in the right order. You know, the right polarity. So this point 0.1 goes to this resistor, the uh, cathode end of it. So that's the cathode of our point 0.1. Is that the point one? Yep. Just want to make sure we get those in there correctly. Good. I'm leaving them a little loose because I think I might want to fold them over. Now this DC blocking 1000 goes to the speaker. So is this the end that goes to the speaker? Yes. So that is the cathode end of that one. Hmm. Yeah. I'm going to have to redesign this and move these around a little bit. Or they're not going to fit into the tin. <laughs> Spatial reasoning. Apparently not my strong suit. Did I do that right? Yes. Yes, I did. Sorry, like I said, my nerves are a little shook up with everything today, so... I'm questioning myself. All right, then we have this one, which is our gain capacitor. And one end of it goes to pin 8. So it goes in that way as well. That leaves our power, which is the um, nine volt battery clip. I got one of them here. I just gotta do the ends. I am following standard practice here, which means pin one, which is the one denoted with a square, is ground. And pin 2 is our VCC. Let me get them separated. Because you know what the offspring says. You got to keep them separated. Of course, I don't think they're talking about electronics. But hey, the shoe fits, wear it, right? Okay. And that leaves the speaker. Which, frankly, <laughs> doesn't matter which way I put in. Now I know all you audio types will be going, yes it does, yes it does. Well, maybe it does. I've always thought of speakers as non-polarized. I mean, if you're putting in more than one speaker, then why yes. Then it does matter, because you're going to be dealing with phase. But, we're only dealing with one speaker, so it doesn't really matter.
or maybe it does. I don't know. Whoops. Just hit the camera with my head. It's a problem with having a big giant head. It runs into stuff. All right. Next, we'll clean the flux. Nothing but the finest from Dollar General. 70% isopropyl alcohol. Or for the British among you, isopropanol. Clean the whistle. And finally, our LM386, which I need to shape the pins. I'm going to do that by just kind of putting them on the desk there. Giving them a little bendy bend. Pin one marker. Make sure that you don't have any bent pins. Doesn't look like it. Guess we're ready to test her out, huh? All righty. Plugged in. We got the guitar here. This is a uh, 72 reissue Telecaster Deluxe. Now, what can I play? It's not going to get us demonetized. Uh, maybe just a scale. Okay. Let's turn on the overdrive. It's not very loud. Turn that back off. Yeah, unfortunately it's not very, I mean it's loud when I'm kicking the overdrive, but otherwise, not very loud. Yeah, so it works, but I don't like it. I'm going to make some changes. This is good for a proof of concept, version 1, all that. But like I said, I just uh, I want to change these capacitors. Because I need this to fit in and... Hang on, let me, uh, let me unplug stuff. Dark board. Power. should probably unplug the power first. The capacitors are sticking up too far. I can't fold this one down because of this, so I need to rotate it 90 degrees. These little ones, yeah, I can fold them down. No, not really much of a problem anyway. So that will probably be version 2, which you might see sometime in December or you might not see until next year. Hard to say. Anywho, thanks for watching. And if you enjoyed this, I hope you'll give me a thumbs up. We are at, let's see, how many subscribers tonight? It is uh, November 24th, by the way. 99,443 subscribers. So, a little, uh, a little under 600 to go. So, guys, thank you again for watching. Uh, like, comment, subscribe, you know, all that good stuff. That's it. I'm out. Peace.